Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and today we're doing a playthrough of Simon's God of War. Now, a few things to note before we dive into the actual playthrough, just the usual bits and bobs to get out of the way. Number one, this is not a sponsored playthrough. Simon has done sponsored content with Board Game Co over the past few campaigns. This particular video, not sponsored in any way. This is me just reaching out to them, asking them if I have access to the game, and they gave me access to the game, which brings us to point number two, which this is a TTS playthrough. To the best of my knowledge, there is no physical prototype of the game, so the only thing I have access to is a TTS module. TTS playthroughs aren't my favorite way to experience or showcase a game. I'll do the best I can to give you as much of a taste or flavor or a feel for the game, but ultimately I do think TTS playthroughs do lack something that you get from the table, even just the maneuvering and dropping, whatever. So TTS playthrough, we'll do our best. Number three is please take into account that I do work for GameFound. This campaign is on GameFound, so even though uh, it's not a sponsored playthrough from Simon, obviously there's still a relationship I have with Simon, and of course I work for GameFound as well. Take all that stuff into account. That said, this isn't really a review either. This is me just showcasing in the game, so I don't know if that really matters, but disclaimer is disclaimer. And the number four is this is going to be a solo game. God of War is uh, primarily designed as a one to two player dungeon crawl slash, slash boss battler, and there is an expansion that is going to make it a three to four player, but in the one to two player mode, I've played it both at two players so far for half a game, I've played it as uh, one player for a full game, and now I'm diving into it for one player again. My own personal note is I think two player has a bit more dynamic aspect to the gameplay. I've enjoyed it both ways, which I guess is mini review, so I don't know. Uh, I've enjoyed it both ways, but I do think the two player is uh, slightly better than the one player, but I think both are pretty decent. But I'll try to walk you through the differences more towards the end of the video. Once you have a feel for how it plays, you can then see the uh, differences of the two player mode. I think that's enough for us to go ahead and get started. So let's go ahead and start showing you the various things on the table, and we'll walk through, well, how to play the game. Now I'm going to give you a very quick overview of the game, and then we'll just dive into it. So do not expect a full rules teach. This is an overview of how the game plays, and that's it. And then we'll just start it off. The general idea is we're trying to take down this boss, this guy over here. And he's going to enter the board in one of two situations. Either, oh wait, one last thing, I forgot the last thing. The last thing to note, and this is all like, you know, campaign stuff or marketing things and all that stuff, which is basically, we're going to be diving into a single scenario here. The game is made up, I believe the core game, before we get into anything else, the core game is made up of eight scenarios. Supposedly they're all vastly different from one another, uh, having puzzles or things and they feel different. I haven't played the other scenarios, so I'm just saying supposedly because I haven't played them. Uh, there are four different bosses to fight against, as well as Freya, so a fifth uh, undefeatable boss Freya or something like that. Don't know exactly there. We have eight monsters in the game, and we have two characters. We have uh, Kratos and Atreus, and they're go both going to have different tech trees and ways to upgrade them with various upgrade cards. So even though you only have two characters, there are multiple ways to upgrade them. And that's, of course, before we dive into any expansions, stretch goals, all the usual things you can expect to see on a typical Simon campaign. I think that they have... well. Either way, let's go ahead and dive into the game. Let's go ahead and dive into the game, starting off with how do you play the game. So, the main goal is to take out this boss. We have a boss over here on the table, we are wanting to take him out, and to that end, he has to be on the board before you take him out. For him to go on the board, one of two things will happen. Either the turn timer over here will slowly move past this line over here, and on this line, the boss will enter the board. That's option one. Option two is when we open the three different chests over here. We have three different chests on the board. Once we open those three different chests, that's going to be the other way that the game, that the triggers uh, create the, the big bad entering the board, at which point we can take him out. Obviously, if enters the board from this line, we have less time to take him out, because if we haven't taken him out by the end of turn 20, we lose the game. So getting him on the board earlier is a good thing, not to mention the chests have goodies in them anyway, so we kind of want to do that. Past that, it's going to follow a very general arc that you're used to in these kinds of games. We're going to have a hand of cards. Those ca cards are going to define our actions. We'll use them to power our movement, our attack, our interactions, all with the unique el elements or in, uh, the unique aspects of this game. When we're done taking our turns, the enemies are going to activate, taking two turns with their behavior and rune decks over here, which indicate who's activating and what they're doing. So basically, we take a turn, enemy takes a turn, back and forth until we either open all three chests or until this line is crossed, at which point the boss enters the board, and then we either take him out or we don't. That's the high-level idea of how this plays. With that, I'm going to dive into it straight off the bat. We will talk about how uh, the two-player is different. There's little boards up here. We'll get more into these boards later. They won't make as much sense to you right now. Now, so I'm not going to bother. We're going to start off by just taking our turn, and to that end, uh, Kratos and Atreus in the solo mode activate as a single unit. They move around the board together. I may just start using one miniature. It'll be a little easier for TTS, but we'll start off with using two of them. And to that end, I'm going to go ahead and shuffle this deck over here, and I'm going to draw my starting hand of four cards, which you can see over here on this solo board over here, they have four cards uh, that you're going to be drawing into your hand with the ability to upgrade that, but we'll talk more about that later. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and draw four cards to my hand. I'm going to put them on the table so you can see them. I'll move these 
these dice over here so we can get those out of the way. We're just going to go ahead and lay out four cards so you can see the four cards we have access to this round. These are going to define, well, a few things. First of all, every single card can be used to move to. Let's go and show you the card. Every card can be used to move to, to interact with an object, or to block one. That's the basic thing on the bottom of the card. Past that, the number on the card defines its strength if you're using it for an attack, which we have Furious Blow, we have Axe Toss, and we have Dash and Bash. Those are the three basic attacks we have, plus the whole stuff going on this board but that will all make sense shortly so we're going to start off on the board over here we have two reds two blues we have atreus as activating primarily through this discard action on the side over there actually that's a little cut off on the screen i'll show you this over here so you can see the discard actions over there you can discard certain combinations of cards for example the red and the blue can be discarded to deal one damage to an enemy with rage two and one damage to an enemy in your zone so we can discard red and blue cards to do that and discarding cards to power atreus is an important part of the game because of the synergy aspect of the game which we're going to talk about soon as soon as we see it happen so so deal one damage to an enemy in range two and one damage to an enemy in your zone. So I think I kind of want to, ah, do I head this way? You know what? I might head this way on the board and see how it plays out. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use a movement, I think. Let's use a red movement or if I use the red, also deal one damage to an enemy in your zone. Yeah, I think we're going to use a red to go ahead and move. So we're going to use discard a red card to move two. So we're going to go one, two. Uh, these lines over here, red lines block line of sight, white lines block movement, and dotted lines are just zones. So we moved one, two. We move with Atreus. Keep that in mind as we go. Now, these characters are going to fall over a lot as we play, so that's why I might just get rid of Atreus soon enough. We'll put them on to the side for emotional support. Uh, so we go ahead and we do that with a move two action. Just, again, any card can be used for that. Then we're going to go ahead and drop a red and blue card together to power arrow volley over here. So we're going to deal one damage to enemy in range two and one damage to enemy in your zone and also increase our Spartan Rage. That little symbol at the end is Spartan Rage. So we're going to go ahead and move this up over here. And then we're going to go ahead and put markers. Now this is where it's going to be a little annoying at first to grab these, but we want to, because we, whoops, because we are doing, um, Atreus's markers over here because Atreus did that card over there We're gonna use his markers to go ahead and deal one damage to enemy within range two and one damage to enemy range in your zone So we did both of those and we gained our Spartan range and it is important to track how you dealt damage to these characters Now these guys over here They are gonna be a strength four over here to go walk through the card You can see this over here. Let's go ahead and show you this card. You can see the Hellwalker has a um, the, the three over there in the top corner I think is the number of enemy models in the game or starting off the one is going to be a uh, the one is going to be them attacking. I have to remember that one over there. The one over there. I have to remember this. I might get some things wrong as we play, just for the record, but we'll have to go through that. Uh, the over here, the bottom left. Oh, that's the dice you roll. Never mind. That's going to be the dice you roll when you defeat it. The top right corner. The bottom left is going to be the amount of damage it deals when it attacks you. The middle number over there is four health, and the zero there is range zero. Okay, that's the the quick attributes of a card over here. So we're going to go ahead and attack him. We did one damage to each of these two, and we have the nightmare, and we have the um, whatever this guy was. Uh, the I don't remember what his name was. Anyways, that's action one. Uh, then we gained our rage, and that's going to be these two cards over here into this card pile. We are done. Then we're going to use this card over here to go ahead and power our axe toss. So the way that's going to work over here, do I want to be this close to enemies? I guess so. It's fine. We need our axe toss to go ahead and deal one damage, and that's going to be one damage to range two over here. So you can see one damage to range two. We need that to count to this guy. Range is pretty simple. You just count. That's all you do. Just count zones, no line of sight, none of that. And then also axe toss over here says also deal one damage to another target in your zone. So we're going to go ahead and deal one damage of Atreus's, of Kratos' damage to each of these characters. And again, tracking damage is important. All the dropping extra tokens is fun, but not actually the way you play the game. So that's going to be everything we did over there. I think that was everything. Why do I feel we had one extra card? Uh, but that's it. That is everything. We did one move. We did two of those over there. And that is our turn. Our turn one is done. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And now we're going to go ahead and... Um, well, do the bad guy's turn. So, we're going to go up on this track over here. We're going to advance this by one, and we're going to draw the first combination of cards. Again, I'll shuffle these. I did that already, but let's just do that for the record. We're going to go ahead and flip this card over here. Scenario one, and we're going to flip this card over here. So, this card advances the menace track by one. It's the only card in the six card deck that will do that, meaning normally this is going up once per round, but every six cards is going to go up an extra time. Keep that in mind when you're counting your turns. Then over here, we're going to be activating the green action over here. We could ignore the bottom part right now. You'll see why soon. But the green part says... Uh, activate monster A. So we're going to activate all the Hellwalkers on the board. Now the way they activate is they're all going to move and then attack if they can. So they're moving towards us, so that's going to be one. Over here we have another one. 
and then the one in our space is going to attack us and that's going to deal one damage to us as a whole now again things are a little different if you're doing it solo versus two player for right now it shouldn't matter much they're just going to deal one damage we'll put one damage onto our board in fact we'll put it above our board so we can track it a little easier so damage above our board is going to be our damage and keep in mind our health over here is 10 so that's what we're going to be taking account taking into account as we try not to die in this game so that's basically it that was turn one except one thing you're supposed to draw two cards every turn so we're going to go ahead and draw another card and we have a nightmare so there's two nightmare cards two hellwalker cards basically there's two cards for each monster you have in the game plus two cards of the scenario that's what you'll have the nightmare is going to be activating on the red rune over here so it's going to be activating healing all monsters in a tile with a nightmare Oh, heal one, all monsters in a tile with a nightmare. I don't like that at all. So it's going to activate. So we'll have this one is going to move across the board to try to attack us. Its range is two. Keep that in mind over here. Let's go ahead and show you the card. Its range is two. And again, past that, it's uh, there's two of them. There's going to be a rolling one die when you kill it. It that deals one damage and has four health, but a range of two. This one cannot attack us. This one could attack us. And more than that, they actually move to the furthest range possible. So this guy's actually going to step backwards one because he wants to do that. He wants to be further away from us. And then his damage should follow, ideally. And then he's going to attack us at range two, and he's again going to attack us again for dealing one damage at the top of our board over there. But it's also going to heal all monsters in a tile. Heal one is it all monsters? Let me see the card. Heal one all monsters in a tile with a nightmare. That's brutal. So that means we're going to take off damage from each of these. I'm going to take off a Kratos' damage over here. Kratos, 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 right? We're going to take off the damage over there. Both these monsters got healed. That is not cool, and I don't like that one bit. With that said, we're going to go ahead and draw four cards and continue our actions. And I drew them to my hand, which was a mistake. Let's go ahead and place it out over here and see what we're doing. So we have two yellows, two reds, uh, two yellows, two blues. Uh, yellow and blue over here is evade, where you can move to and heal to, ignoring reaction damage. Reaction damage is when you move out of a place with a monster. You're going to take damage for each monster in that spot. But I don't know what I said what I want to do right now because right now I could do a heal too. It's not a bad move to be able to get that off the board quickly and dive into this corner here. I might just do that. So you know we're going to go ahead and discard this and discard this to wander directly one two down we're gonna actually only wander one and you'll see why in a second we're gonna wander one over here let me just think through this i think that works i think that works so we're gonna wander one instead of two and we're going to heal two as well so we're gonna take our damage off we've healed a bit we've done our evade action over here and then past that we're gonna follow that up with uh, spending this over here oh interesting you know what before we do that before we do that while in this zone we're going to spend our uh, axe toss, which is going to deal one damage to this guy over here, to the Nightmare, and one damage to the enemy in my zone. Okay, so we're doing a Kratos' attack over here, so we're putting that damage back, and then we're going to do the Evade, where we're going to wander into this zone over here, and then finally, the last thing we're going to do is, if we can stand this guy up, eventually stand him up, there we go. The last thing we're going to do is, now that we're one zone away, and I think at this point we're actually going to move Atreus off the board for moral support, and leave Kratos over there. He's going to be taking pot shots on the sideline over here. Uh, we're going to have Kratos over here, is going to go ahead and activate Dash and Bash. He's going to use his, his yellow card to activate it. You must move to the target zone, so it's a range one, but you have to move. You keep, you're running, you're running into the zone. If you move, deal plus one damage. So because of that, we're going to deal one damage from the card, and an extra damage because we moved, which means we're going to wander into the zone and deal two damage to the Nightmare, which is going to kill the Nightmare. We're going to add two more damage tokens to the Nightmare, and the Nightmare is dead. Now, here's where we find out the first way that you deal with dead characters, which is basically, you're going to have these, these dice over here. Whenever you kill a baddie, you're going to go ahead and roll this die over here, which we're not counting right now, and you get whatever's on that, which generally is going to be health or Kratos' uh, Spartan Rage over here. But if you kill the baddie and you had synergy, meaning both your people operated together, and you have damage tokens from both colors on that ga bad guy, then you're also going to roll the synergy die, and because we have one and three, that's enough for us to go ahead and uh, do that and we're going to keep a stack of uh, Atreus's tokens over here for ease of access we're going to go ahead and roll these over here and we just got one synergy boost which is going to go up on this track we'll explain that to you in a second and we got one ooh one upgrade card that's a fun one so we're gonna get one upgrade card so how does that work let's go ahead and show you this synergy track over here whenever you gain synergy you'll move up either one or two from each time you kill a baddie and as you get to these little marks here you'll get various upgrades to both your player board to your skill trees as well as adding more cards to your deck so that's basically the way that works we'll, we'll deal with that more as it happens then past that adding a card to your deck we're going to shuffle this over here and then grab a card we're going to look at this card and see what it is and then we add this to a deck. This is basically going to be a regular blue, but it also heals you one, making it even better. That's going to be that, and that is going to be our turn. We're out of cards, we kill the bad guy, we have this one left, and now we're going to go ahead and activate the enemy turn. 
We're going to move this up over here. We're going to flip this over and we have Hellwalkers activating and they're going to be uh, spawning and then activating. So specifically they're spawning on yellow because again, you can check out the card. We spawn on yellow and then we activate. The bottom text on these, by the way, is if there are no monsters, then you would spawn them. That's in general idea. So this, you don't get any freebies in this game. We spawn over here, then we activate. This guy's going to walk over here, which is fine with me. I'm okay with that. This guy's going to walk down here. This guy's going to walk down here and this guy's going to walk down here. So we got all those happening. And then we're going to draw the next card, which is going to be a nightmare. So the nightmares are going to activate with a blue, which means they're going to spawn and then uh, activate. Now the problem with blue is blue is over here. So that nightmare I just killed is straight back. Whoops, that's the wrong guy over there. The nightmare I killed is straight back on the board. He's going to pop over there and then they're going to activate. So this one's going to move and this one's actually going to step back and shoot. Remember how that works? So they're going to shoot me over here and they are going to deal one damage, which is okay because honestly, I have a free heal coming my way and I would have felt like that was wasted if not for that damage. So that works out well for me. Now you could keep cards in your hand, by the way, to be able to use them for blocking. I haven't done that yet. So that is a thing that you could do in the game. So let's try to kill some more baddies and move to the next round. We're going to draw four more cards over here. And again, I drew them to my hand. Let's put them out on the table. Let's move these dice a bit and let's see how this goes. So we got this over here. We got this and let's see how things are going overall. We got we have the ability to use any of our abilities basically. Now over here, let's go ahead and zoom in over here. We have a few things to note. You can use all three colors to summon a wolf, dealing four damage to two enemies in range two, divided how you like. We can summon a squirrel, which would heal us a lot. Uh, we can use focus shot, evade, arrow volley, a bunch of basic options over here. I think instinctively, well, first of all, I need to reserve a card for uh, taking that out. But if I move, this guy has two damage on him, which is important because that means I can take him out with a single starting uh, dash and bash. So that is relevant and helpful to know. Uh, then I could follow it up with a, I can't do another dash and bash in the same round, unfortunately. What I have over here, deal two damage to one, I mean range one, you may move one. So if I use this, I could pop up one, but then they're more likely to attack me. What is the, uh, what's the discard over here? So we know that we have, we did one Hellwalker so far, one Hellwalker, so there's gonna be another Hellwalker activating this turn. And they usually are going to, they're always going to activate. So we need to stay one away from the Hellwalkers if we don't want to be hit by them. So maybe we just take a resting turn almost, see how that works out for us. Let's see, we have the Hellwalkers over here. You know, what? let's go ahead and do that. So what we're going to do is, hmm, I can use that for that, that for that, and that for that. No, we can do a blue and a red, deal one damage to an enemy in range two. Deal two damage to one enemy in range one. Yeah, we're going to do that. Okay, we're going to use the blue card over here. So we're going to use the blue card to open the chest. Okay, so we did that. We use an interact over there. Now, Atreus over here can also use a basic interact. He has this action over here, ingenuity. Any card can be used to interact or to deal one damage in range one. But right now, we did this card over here. We move up our track over there. So we move up our rage track. And then we are also going to go ahead and grab a card. We see what it is, put it on top of the deck. You can't attack with this card. You may discard it to gain two Spartan range and two health. Ooh, that's fun. That's fun. Lots of healing there. Uh, then keep in mind, we use that card. Oh, interesting. So I don't think I actually get the health on this card because I don't think I used it. I think I don't think if I discard it to interact, I don't think I get it. I'd have to use it for an attack, but I think I'm just going to give it up. Unfortunately, I'm going to give up that health. It is what it is because then I'm going to go ahead and now that this chest is done, chest one is gone. We're going to use this over here to put that down card over there, which is going to let me move to here. And I'm going to be able to do two damage to it because one damage for the card and one damage for dash and bash. And that means we're going to drop two more damage on this Hellwalker, which is enough to kill him. We're going to take those two off and we have both damage types. So we're going to get a synergy boost. Let's go ahead and see what synergy boost we got over here. Let's roll. We want two of that synergy, two of the synergy. There we go. So we got two Spartan Rage and two synergy. So we're going to go up one and two on the Spartan Rage. And we're going to go over here. We we're going to get both a card to the hero's deck and we're going to get a uh, upgrade. So let's go ahead and show you that over here. We're going to put this on top of the deck. We got a three damage, but take one wound. So that's going to be useful over there. And then we're also going to go ahead and get a um, upgrade. So the way that works, we're going to grab one of our upgrade tokens and we can put it either on uh, our health over here. So we can upgrade our health if we want, but that's less fun, frankly. Or we could take uh, one of these skill trees. Now, again, these are the area where there are different skill trees to upgrade your characters. But right now, we're going to go ahead and have the option for skill tree one, which is more defensive. When you use cards to block, you can deal two damage to the attacker. So that's kind of a very defensive approach. Or we can use it to deal one damage and attack once per round. We can have Atreus dealing one damage. Now, whenever you see these little marks over here, let's go ahead and rotate that. Uh, whenever you see, let's go ahead and do this here. There we go, whatever. When you slide it down, Come on, come on, come on. There we rotate, rotate, almost, whatever. Uh, when you slide this down over here, you're going to be able to show that you activate that ability. So once per round, I can deal one extra damage and attack. Now keep in mind this Hellwalker is dead. So let's remove him from the board. 
and then we're going to go ahead and continue with our turn over here because we still have two more cards. Now the problem is, this is why I have to think about how I want to handle this because realistically, maybe I should use the, hmm, I don't think it makes sense. I don't think it makes sense. I think it makes sense to stick with what I was doing. I'm not going to be able to benefit from my uh, extra attack because he's not doing it right now. I am going to go ahead and do focus shot over here. So deal two damage to one enemy in range one. You may move one after the attack. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and discard these cards. We're going to do teal, deal two of Atreus's damage to this baddie over here. And then we're going to, we could move one, but we're going to choose not to. Because I'm trying to avoid damage and as well as taking advantage of any yellow cards I draw next round. And I think this guy is going to hopefully not attack us. But these guys are less likely to attack us because of where they are unless they, um, unless they get two activations. That's my turn. That's going to be my turn over here, which means we go back to this track over here. We move up one over here and we activate monster A, which is how I forgot that they do have two activations coming. So when we hit this point over here, this point over here, this point over here, we get free activations of the baddies. So before we even draw anything, we're just going to activate all Hellwalkers, which I forgot about. So this Hellwalker is going to walk over here. This one's going to walk over here and this one's going to walk over here. There we go. Simple, clean enough. Then we're going to draw a card. It's probably a Hellwalker. Nope. It's the scenario card. We're going to have that. We are going to all heroes take one damage. Okay. Now this, I should note off hand this is an area I'm not actually sure about uh, when playing the solo mode I know that all damage that Atreus takes is directed to Kratos whenever there's times where they both take damage I'm not actually sure how that works so a little disclaimer on the rules aspect uh, keep in mind uh, I got to walk through from the developers plus the differences and whatnot so I don't know all the rules over here uh, but that's basically um that's the situation yeah, that's the situation. So I might, it's possible that I'm supposed to take two damage when a scenario effect targets everyone. I'm not confident if I am or not. I know that there are some cards that will specifically target Atreus, in which case it just, just targets Kratos in a two-player game. But for sure, if you're for in a solo game, for sure, if you're playing a two-player game, they would each take one damage. The reason I'm not sure, especially because balance-wise, is they have less health solo. So I think balance-wise, it makes sense they only take one damage. But hey, if I win, you can say I cheated. Anyways, that's going to be the first action, which means we go to the next action over here. We uh, draw the next card over here, and we have our Hellwalkers activating with B. All heroes damaged by this activation suffer stun. So that's not going to be fun over there because we probably are being damaged. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna damage us over here. So we're going to walk over here, walk over here, and they're going to attack me, which means I should have kept a card in my hand. I forgot, I forgot they're going to get that. So I take a damage, and then more importantly, I am stunned, which means my first action, the first card I play in this round is going to have to be played just to stand back up. But with that said, we go to the next round over here. We're going to go ahead and shuffle these decks. Let's go ahead and do that. You know, we can do that after. There's no rush. There's no rush. All right. We're going to go ahead and uh, draw these three cards over here. But we're also going to draw a fourth card because we have to shuffle up our deck over here, which is a bit of a waste, by the way, because it means we don't get to benefit from these two new cards twice. So we're going to go ahead and group these cards over here. Let's group that. Let's flip and let's shuffle. Okay. I'm going to take these, move them up here, and we get our fourth card over here, which is going to be a blue card. Let's move those dice out of the way. And that's basically what we have. So first thing first is we do have enough damage that we are going to go ahead and discard this card. No reason not to. Instead of attacking, you may discard. Oh, you may start to gain two and heal two. Yeah, let's do that. We're going to gain two of Spartan Rage. One, two. And then we're going to heal two, which means we're going to uh, remove two of these damage. And we're keeping ourselves nice and alive for right now. But then past that, we have these cards over here. We could take a three wounds over here to take out a baddie. This one is over here. It makes sense, honestly. It makes sense. Let's do the following. Let's go ahead and use this one. I could... Interesting. So I could instantly just take him out. No, I don't want to. I don't want to because I want to deal three damage. So I'm going to deal three damage, three of Kratos' damage to this guy right here. And then I'm going to follow it up with one of these. Which one makes sense to do it with? Let me think. It probably makes sense. Oh, interesting. No, I need to pause. I need to pause. This is interesting. Because of the way this plays out, deal one damage to an enemy in range one and deal one damage to an enemy in your zone. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do, okay? I'm going to do the following. I'm going to drop these two cards, okay, together to be able to activate Arrow Volley, okay? Deal one damage to enemy range two and one damage to enemy in your zone. So we're going to deal one white damage of uh, Atreus' damage over here. We're going to drop one. That was a bunch of tokens over there. We don't need all those tokens. We're going to grab one of them and we drop them on this enemy over here, okay? Whoops. Oh, I have to, forgot that I... Oh, no. Oh, no. I can't do that one second because I forgot I have to stand up. I have to, I'm stunned right now. Good catch, by the way. Good catch on that. Because I'm stunned, I don't think I have an option. I'm going to discard a card just to be stunned. Okay, so I'm just going to discard a card. It is what it is. Then I'm going to go ahead and use this to attack this guy for three. So I'm going to deal three damage to him while also gaining two Spartan Rage. So going up one, two. 
and then I'm going to follow it up with just having Atreus just do a uh, Ingenuity over here, just basic Ingenuity, deal damage when range one. So I'm going to drop this, and we're going to deal one damage of Atreus's to take him out. So that's three black damage and one white damage, which means we are staying still, but we are rolling to go ahead and um, target the baddies. Okay. And that's going to be, we heal ourselves. Now, did I take the damage? I think I started with three damage. I think I started with three, so I should still take the damage. I'm going to take the damage over here of that person, of this uh, take one wound card over here. We're going to gain one ingenuity. We're going to heal one damage, and we're going to also gain one more Spartan range. Okay, so we are at the top of the Spartan rage track, and we haven't even told you what that does. Let's get that ingenuity first. There we go. Synergy, not ingenuity. I don't know what I'm saying, synergy. Um, how many baddies have I killed? I think I should be here. We started here, I killed one baddie, then I killed two with a double, which I didn't do, and then over here. So we are over here. I'm pretty sure I'm doing that right. Let me just make sure. We had one over here that I killed, and then a new one spawned. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've killed two baddies. Okay. So because of, just because of that, so we are over there on this track, which means we are going to go ahead and increase our hand size and add one new card to the hero's deck. And that card is going to be a plus one uh, Spartan Rage over there, which we haven't shown you how that works. We are going to grab one of these, and now we're drawing an extra card every turn, which is pretty awesome. So that is basically what happened there. We are done. We're going to remove this card over here, and then the enemies are going to activate, which is a problem because we're definitely going to be attacked. There's not a question over here. So we're going to move up one of the track over here. We're going to flip this. We're going to shuffle. We're going to drag this over here. We're going to flip this. We're going to shuffle, and we're going to drag this over here. And we're going to go ahead and flip this over here. We got scenario one over there. That means we got the timer moving. Advance one on the menace track. That's going to move us up another one. And then we're going to do the blue action, which is uh, activate monster B. So monster B, he's going to step one back because again, they do that over there. And did I have, who's the damage on? Who's that damage on? This is a problem. I think... I don't think that damage is on anyone. I think I did not take it off the board, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I may have mi I may have made a slim step there. So uh, either way, I'm being a little harsh myself. So we took those two damage off the board over there. Uh, we moved him back, and he's going to attack me for one. So I'm going to take one damage. That is him over there. And this one is going to simply step one closer, but not within range, so he can't attack me. We're going to attack again with another card. We have the Hellwalkers activating with red. All heroes suffer damage. Uh, all heroes are stunned. So he's going to walk forward one, he's going to attack me for one, and I'm going to be stunned, which means, again, I'm wasting a card next turn. Let's take that extra one gone. Uh, let's go ahead and have this one move up forward as well. So we have this one. Let's have him go... No, I think... Oh, interesting. So we could have him go here because it's equidistant, and that's important because over here, well, you'll see why soon enough. Okay, that's going to be that. And those are the two activations, and I think that's good enough for right now. So... Let's go ahead and uh, deal with this. We're on to the next round over here. We're going to draw a hand of five cards, but unfortunately, remember, we're not going to be able to activate all five. We have to discard one of them for stun, so we'll deal with that shortly. Now, something you haven't seen is you could stack multiple cards of the same color on an attack to power it up. You could do that, but I haven't done it yet. Over here, we have Focus Shot. Deal two damage to enemy range one. You may move one after the attack. Hmm. Is that worth it? That's two damage on the thingy. I could also use Spartan Rage. Now, Spartan Rage, ooh, ooh. You know what? I'm going to have this guy go here. I'm going to have him move here. Because again, I have the choice. It's equidistant as far as moving there. And Spartan Rage is important because Spartan Rage means you spend all that to move up to two. Enemies follow Kratos. Deal six damage. Divide as you want in Kratos' zone. And then um, heal two. So that's basically what we're going to do right now. I think we could do Spartan Rage right now. And I don't see a strong reason not to. I don't see a strong reason not to. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and have Spartan Rage. We're going to activate Spartan Rage, resend the track to zero. We're going to move two. Enemies follow Kratos. Remember that, because that's important, because that's why we won't take escape damage, because we're not escaping. We're dragging everyone around the map with us. Uh, let's put that down there. Can you just stand up, Kratos? We're going to move this guy over here. They're all in the same zone. They're all over here right now, but we'll deal with that shortly. And then I can do six damage how it divided how I want, which means I need to think through how is... How is Atreus dealing damage? Atreus can deal damage with this over here. To do focus shot to one enemy range one, you may move one after the attack. So we can do that with that. We can go ahead and have him activate two of these to do it again, basically. Whoops, those two on my hand. Okay. And then we have this for my... Um... Oh, that's annoying. That's annoying. How do I want to handle that? How do I want to handle that? Can we do any of these? Deal one damage to enemy range one, one damage to enemy in your zone. I can't do that. I don't have any blue cards. It's a little trickier. It's a little trickier. So I could... I can give up this card, I guess. 
yeah, it's a little bit of waste. I'm not getting the Spire and Rage from it, but it is what it is. I think it's worth it. So we're going to go ahead and discard this card, not benefit from its extra Spartan Rage. That's going to be the card we discard to, um, you know, basically, uh, what's it called? Stand back up. Now, by the way, speaking of which, I'm pretty sure, I'm not certain here. I'm pretty sure I only get this if I use it for an attack, not if I discard it. But I'm not certain certain, so there is that. Anyways, then we're going to go ahead and do the following. Oh, was I actually able to kill all of them? I don't know if I am. I don't know if I am. But it's okay. I think it's still worth it. Anyways, what we're going to do over here is we move two over here. And we are going to go ahead and... Kratos is using a Spartan Rage. Okay, so he's using a Spartan Rage to deal six damage. Divide it how I want um, in amongst the enemies in the zone. And so for right now, let's just say we're doing two, two, two. Okay, so... And we're going to put two on the board. You'll see why shortly. But we're doing two, two, two. We're going to put two on this guy over here. And the other two we're going to be taking out. So you don't have to worry about them. So we got this one over here. We're going to take this one over here. That's going to have two damage. The other two both have two damage. Then we're going to activate Focus Shot twice to deal two damage to one enemy in range one, and you may move one after the attack. So we're going to activate Focus Shot to take out this one, and activate Focus Shot to take out that one. But let's do it one at a time. Let's say we're taking out the Nightmare first. Okay, so we're going to get rid of both these cards, activating Focus Shot, dealing two of Atreus' damage to him, and that's going to put it at four damage, which means you're going to kill it, first of all, and also roll these fun dice over here that give us extra powerful fun things. Let's see how that works. Ah, so close. Uh, we get one Spartan Rage, and then we um, also get to activate uh, the Synergy Boost. Now, also, by the way, we didn't do it yet, but we do heal two as part of Spartan Rage. So we're going to get that healing two. Uh, then we're going to choose not to move one. Okay, so we're not moving one at all. Then we're going to do it again to the other one, which, remember, has two damage. So we're again doing that exact same shot again. We're going to go ahead and do that, dealing two more damage, taking it out. And because, again, we did Synergy, we're going to go ahead and roll these dice over here. And this time we probably are moving one. Ooh, we got a card and a synergy boost, which means we actually get two cards. So we're going to go over here, and we're going to get this upgrade over here, which is uh, plus one to the hero's deck. So we're going to get two cards over here to the hero's deck. The first one is going to be a two damage yellow, and the second one is going to be a, ooh, a rainbow card. Three damage if attacking the boss. Ooh. Interesting. I like it. Okay. Uh, anyways, that's going to be the card we have over there. And then we have this enemy still in this zone. Don't forget, he's still in this zone over here. And we're going to put that there, like so. And then we're going to have... Um, now, it's interesting. I'm not going to backtrack it now. But I probably could have had him here and just not worried about any... No, I wouldn't have been able to. I wouldn't have been able to because the way I divided damage. It all makes sense. It's all good. Then I'm going to go ahead and move. Okay, so I'm going to do is now... Is it... Maybe I could have. No, I couldn't have. We're all good. And then I'm going to go ahead and move one. Now, because I'm moving out, I will take the escape damage, unfortunately but it is getting me closer to this chest up here, which I would love to get my hands on. So um, that's why we're doing that. And that's basically our turn. Our turn is done. I think it was a pretty strong turn overall. Oh, I'm such a silly person. Do I do... So here's a fun fact. Here's a fun fact, okay? I'm not confident whether Spartan Rage counts as an attack. And if it does count as an attack, I should be using this upgrade. And you should have one extra damage. But I don't think it's an attack, so I'm not going to, okay? There's this extra level upgrade where Spartan Rage deals four extra damage, which is fun. But we're not going to count as an attack. I'm not sure. We're going to go with the enemy turn. We're going to advance this up here. We're going to draw a card. We have a yellow on uh, Nightmares. So Nightmares are going to spawn and then attack. So, and then activate. So, and also, in general, because this card says, if a monster that isn't present on the board is drawn, spawn it. Okay, so we're going to spawn it anyway. And again, I don't know. If a monster that isn't present on the board is drawn, spawn it on... So again, fun question over here. Not sure the answer. I don't know the sequence here, whether you first spawn a monster or not. Meaning, effectively, the yellow over here says we spawn in yellow. Does that mean we spawn twice? I'm going to say yes, because I want this game to be a little harder, just in case. But we're going to spawn twice, but I could be wrong with that. Although, I guess... Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if you spawn twice in this situation, but we're just going to say that you do. So, we're spawning twice, both for the uh, the Nightmare card, as well as for this card. Because, in theory, the Rune card is drawn first, then the Monster card is drawn, in theory. Again, I could be wrong on this. I could be wrong. But, either way, they're both going to go ahead and activate, moving towards me over here. It's trying to try to get closer towards me. That's going to be that. And now, it is the next activation. Next activation happens. We have Hellwalkers, which I assume would happen at some point, on B. Uh, they're going to all... Uh, stop stunning me. Stop stunning me, Hellwalker. So, the Hellwalker is going to move one up to here. Um, oh, by the way, I lied. There is a monster over here. So, this one actually goes off the board, so that question doesn't matter. And this one, instead, is going to go ahead and walk over here and shoot me. Actually, he's going to stay where he is and shoot me, because it's range 2. So you actually are going to get shot by... So a few things are going to happen. 
First of all, we got a trace here, moral support. We are going to take one damage from the nightmare that could have shot me that I missed. And then we're going to take a damage from the Hellwalker, who's again going to stun me, which is a little obnoxious Hellwalker. If they could stop, that'd be great. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and draw five. We are stunned. So that's going to be our turn. We draw five. We draw a nice yellow card over there. We draw that. A blue. We have a yellow. Be a red. Be a red. It's not a red. Now, this card over here does a count. It counts as that color for all effects. Color with an extra L over there. Okay. So we are trying to do two damage to this guy over here. And at least one needs to be from Atreus. That's the idea. Because then we can do that. But we also have people within range two. So we could do, we don't have any red. We have evade, which we can use. This one's the three damage on the boss, but the boss is not relevant yet. And counts as a color for any effects. So I could use this card. This card can be played in any attack and counts as that color for any effects. I, I think I could discard this for anything. That's what I'm gonna say, because I think that makes sense. So if that's the case, we can go ahead and we can use, we can use focus shot. But that focus shot's not as helpful as I'd like. I could do arrow volley. Yeah, let's do arrow volley. So we're going to use this over here. We're going to discard that to stand up. We're going to use that. You know, we're going to discard this to stand up. Okay. We're going to discard this uh, and this for arrow volley. No. Wait, what am I doing? This was to stand up. There we go. This is to stand up over here. This and this are for arrow volley, which is going to deal one damage to this guy over here and one damage to this guy over here. Uh, then, dash and bash is kind of a waste in this case, but it is what it is. Or I could use axe toss. Yeah, I'll use axe toss over here. So I'm going to use axe toss in this case, which is going to uh, deal one damage to another target in your zone. So I'm going to basically deal one uh, of Atreus's damage to... I don't need all those whatever, they're over here now. I'm going to deal one of Atreus's damage to this guy over here, because I had the range two, and then I'm going to deal one of Atreus's damage to this guy, taking him out, and he has one of each damage type on him, which means we can now get that boost. Uh, because I used it for an attack over there, we're also going to get the plus one health on it. And then lastly, we'll use this, which is a bit of a waste, we'll use this to move two. But we're going to hold on to that for a second, because uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to roll for our killing this enemy. So we kill the Hellwalker, we're going to go ahead and roll these dice over here. And we got a double synergy and a Spartan Rage. And we also got a Spartan Rage from Arrow Volley. So we're going to get one, two Spartan Rage. And we got a double synergy, which means we are going up to the next tier over here. So we're going to get a new card and upgrade our character board. So the new card is going to be uh, this one double color and discard to move three or block two. So more blocking action. And speaking of which, we can use our extra thing. We can try to bump up Spartan Rage or we can try to bump up the blocking. I think bumping up the blocking makes sense in this case because we're going to have a blocking card for us. And in fact, then the real question now, the real question now is in theory, because I'm bumping up the blocking, maybe I hold on to this card because there's a decent chance, there's a guaranteed chance that the Hellwalkers, the Nightmares are activating, and this way I could block it and take it out. When using cards to block, deal two damage to the attacker. Yeah, I think we're going to do that. So we activated our skill tree to bump up our blocking, which is going to give us a little bit of an edge on this. I'm going to hold this card in our hand for the end of the round. Okay. Then we're going to go to the enemy turn because we are done. Also, I still keep forgetting to do this. Deal plus one damage and attack once per round. So I guess I may as well do it to this guy because he was over here. Um, but I don't think it's going to matter. But I keep forgetting to do that. That is that is a thing. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and activate baddies. Baddies are going to activate. We're going to draw a card. It's a nightmare. Shocking. We're going to have red over here. It's going to, who it actually does count. It's going to activate, then heal one. So, so we're going to go through a sequence here. I don't think it matters either way, but I'm going to walk through the way I would do it. So it's going to activate. All they're going to activate. So this one's going to go ahead and walk and attack. Um, and then it's going to um, try to shoot me, basically. So it's going to shoot me over here. And because it shoots me, we're going to uh, play this card as a defense. We're going to block one, which is instantly going to kill it. Now, because of that, I don't think it finishes resolving its card. Now, again, it has three damage anyway, so I don't think it matters. But hypothetically, I would assume if I killed it right away, it wouldn't finish the sequence. That's my own my own, my own vote as far as what makes sense without knowing more. So we're going to kill it. We're going to get the benefits over here. This other nightmare is still going to charge towards us. So this nightmare is going to walk up over here to try to get closer towards us. And we're going to go ahead and draw our synergy dice to see what we get. And we got a double synergy and a Spartan Rage. So we again are going to move up this track, which means now we are drawing, we're going to get extra card and we're going to get two upgrades. So we're going to get upgrade, upgrade. Oh, I missed that. We got a hand size upgrade here. Ooh, we got a hand size upgrade. So we're going to be able to get a hand size upgrade. Let's grab one of these 
And then we get another hand size upgrade, which means now we're drawing seven cards right now. I think it's time for the boss to come out. I think it's time for the boss to come out. Uh, we also get another upgrade, and here we have to choose where it goes because that is our is that our last upgrade? That's our last upgrade. So, do we want to block an additional two? Whenever we block, that could keep us alive very easily. Do we want to deal three damage to the attacker and gain one? This would wrap up our Spartan Rage pretty quickly. Or do we just want to deal four damage? I think instinctively, now that we're leaning in towards attacking, let's just try to ramp up our Spartan Rage faster and have this one, sorry, have this one over here. We're going to have that go there, I think. Yeah, I think that makes the most sense. Okay, and then we are going to draw a card, put it on top of our deck, and that's going to be a two blue. And that was, that was the enemy's turn, card one. Then we have another card, it's going to be blue, activate monster A. So we're going to activate monster A, monster A is not on the board. That's where you look at this card, and we're going to spawn a monster on here. Okay, and then I believe it will still activate. Okay, we have a pretty clear board. We have a great hand of cards coming our way. We're going to be drawing seven cards right now. So one, two, three. Like, I'm feeling pretty good, but also the big bad has 35 health, so there is that. And then we're going to shuffle up the remaining cards. I'm gonna Let's go flip them, shuffle, and pull this deck forward over here. I'm going to draw a card, and that's our hand of seven cards, which is pretty awesome. I feel pretty powerful. Am I stunned? Did I stun myself last round? I think I did correctly resolve all things. Again, mistakes happen as we play through, but I'm trying to play as accurately as possible, and we'll see how that goes. All right, so we probably will want to use this move three, but let's start with a basic move two. There's so much happening here, I don't even know what to do, but we could use a uh, evade. We're going to do a move two, heal two, using Atreus's ability. So we're going to discard a blue and a yellow, and we're going to move two and heal two. That's going to take us back to mostly full health. I think I dropped a token there. Let me just grab it over here. Okay. Uh, then we're going to use a card to interact, I guess, which could be a red one. Let's go ahead and use a, a red one to interact. Why not? Does it make sense? We're going to be using Arrow Volley. Yeah, we can use Arrow Volley. Okay, fine. Uh, then we're going to go ahead. That was to interact and open the chest. So chest number two is open, and we get three Spartan Rage. So we're going to get one, two, three. I could theoretically bring the boss into the board this turn if I wanted. I'm pretty sure I could. One, two, three. One, yeah, I definitely could. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to discard this card to move three. Okay? So, we're going to go one, two... Wait, where am I? I'm over here. So, we go one, two, three. Oh, that's not enough at all. That's not enough at all. I want to move for more. I was hoping to move more. We're going to discard this blue card to move... You know what? You know what? We're going to do the following. We're going to discard this card... And we're going to do an attack of two. So we're going to hit for two. And we're going to bump this up to do another attack. So that's going to be three. So we're going to basically hit it for three right now of Atreus' of, of Kratos' damage. So we're doing two damage attack. Uh, we don't have a enemy in our zone, but that's fine. And we're doing three damage to him. Then we're going to discard a card to move. One, two. And then lastly, we're going to discard a card to um, just take it out, I think. I think it makes the most sense. Although really not, actually. It actually doesn't. We're going to use our last card to move. So we're going to actually hold on our card defensively. Killing him actually is a big mistake, I think. I think tactically is a big mistake. Okay, so we're going to do three damage, and we're going to move into a zone, and then that's it. That's all we do. We have this one card left in our hand to hopefully hold on to the block, because that might be relevant. It might not be. We're going to flip these cards, flip these cards. We're going to put them off to the side. Whoops. We're going to put them off to the side. Put them off to the side. We're going to shuffle. And shuffle. And we're going to draw a card. We have our first enemy is going to be a Hellwalker. There are, There is a Hellwalker on the board. It's going to be spawning and then moving. So spawn in yellow, and then they're both going to move. Let's have him move into our zone. We're just going to take him out next time. We're going to butcher him. And then we're going to have this guy walk up here. And then we're going to spawn the next card. Don't be a Hellwalker. Great, be a Nightmare. Perfect. So we're going to have the Nightmare activate. And it's going to be activating on red. It's going to attack. And watch this part again. We're going to do the same logic. We're going to have him attack first. We'll discard our card. And that, because of our abilities over here, we're going to deal three damage to him. Two damage to the attacker, but it's going to be three. And we're going to bump up our Spartan Rage by one, which is going to kill it. So this guy's dead. And because... Oh, that was all Kratos' damage. That's what, I did. That's what I did wrong. I knew I did something wrong. That makes it all Kratos' damage, because it's all from Kratos. Which means for the first time this game, we're going to be rolling a die just for this track and not for the other unfortunately. And we get one health and one uh, up, up Spartan Rage. Okay. And I think we're going to be bringing the big bat into the board this turn, which is good, because we're going to use a Spartan Rage to uh, stomp on him as soon as we can. That's basically the enemies. That's the enemy's turn. We're going to go ahead and draw, again, our ridiculous seven cards. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, and seven. Okay, we're going to start with a yellow card because I think that makes sense. We're going to start with a yellow card. Uh, that's going to let us use dash and bash where we can basically, uh, we can use our ability over here, this little guy over here, plus the dash and bash's extra one to be able to move into the zone and just do three damage to this guy off the bat. That's three of Kratos' damage. We're then going to discard any one card. Let's go ahead and discard a uh, red over here. And that's going to be for Atreus over here. For Atreus, is going to use his ingenuity over here to deal one damage to him. That's going to take him out. And we have a hybrid of damage over here. We have a hybrid of damage. And that's going to be four damage, which means we're going to take him out and roll both these dice. Okay. That's one ingenuity, uh, one healing, and one rage. None of those help us, unfortunately. Well, the ingenuity helps us. I don't know why I keep calling it ingenuity. It's synergy. It's synergy. The whole time it's synergy. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and use a card to open a chest. So let's go ahead and use a... He's going to activate here. Go one, two, three. So I think we're going to discard this card to open a chest. Okay. And you'll see what I, what I meant in a second, because I know what's happening, because I've played this game. Uh, so, we activate that. We get two new cards added to our deck. We're going to have this double card, double color card, which should go on top over there. And then we're going to have this one over here. And that's, whoa, I've never seen this one. After using an attack move for the game at the end of the round. Well, that's not fun. I mean, it's good, but that's not fun. Uh, anyways, that's going to be our card over there. We've now opened the chest, which means immediately, before our turn resolves, we plop this guy down in his spawn point, and he's going to activate his card, which has Battle Cry. Battle Cry is he's going to, as soon as he comes on the board, and that basically is over here, you're going to, after the quest is spawn, spawn the boss and activate Battle Cry. So we're going to go ahead, and he's going to activate with plus two move, and then place a fire token in each adjacent zone. Fire tokens are under the special rules up here. When using him, the fire tokens represent fire. When a hero enters a zone with a fire token, they take one damage. I know I said fire tokens, but the red tokens represent fire. Okay, so that's going to be that. So you're going to activate with three action movement, with well, with two action movements, so three total, going one, two, three towards us. He's going to spawn a fire token in each zone around us, and each zone around him. And that means, and I don't believe it counts diagonals. I don't believe it counts the zone over here, but again, could be mistaken. And then he's, um, that's it. That's what he's going to do. Which means, now I have to figure out my turns. So, I have a bunch of stuff I could do. I feel like taking a pot shot at him is not a bad thing. I, I guess I have no damage on me, though. But I will have damage in a second. So, you know what? Let's walk into his zone. Walking into his zone won't actually do damage for me. Uh, uh, well, you know what? We're going to do the following. I just said walk into zone. I'm going to use this card over here to power up I already use, oh, uh, you can only use each attack once per round. I've already used dash and bash, so I can't use it again. So let's take a look at these abilities. Um, I could use focus shot over here. Deal two damage to one enemy in range one. You may move one after the attack. I think I'll do that. I think I'm going to use focus shot. So I'm not going to get the Spartan rage over here. Or I could use Spartan rage. Spartan Rage makes more sense. I'm going to use Spartan Rage, okay? So I'm going to move two. I'm going to basically reset the track over here, and I'm going to use the ability. I'm going to move two, deal six damage, uh, and then heal two, although the healing is a waste. We're still going to do it. I'm going to move two over here, okay? I'm going to move one, trying to get him in the zone. It's just, This is a problem over here. We have to move this guy a little off the board. This particular zone is tricky to get him in. Um, and then we're going to uh, deal six damage to the bat boss, and again, he has 20, 35 to deal with. So we're going to put a fiver down here, as well as a one, and that's our, you know, six damage towards his 35. He does two in a hit, by the way. And he has a range one for a basic attack. So his basic activation is going to be, oh, oh, would he have hit me? He'd activate with move two. Yeah, he would have hit me. He would have hit me right there. So I could go ahead and discard a card. So when he, when he hit me, I'm going to use this ability over here. When using cards to block, deal two damage to the attacker. Instead, deal three damage and gain one. So I'll use this card over here to block it. So I'll still take one damage. Okay, so I'm still going to take one damage. And then I'm going to deal three damage back to him. So he's going to get another three damage on him because of that uh, ability there. Okay, and I don't think it matters which tokens I use for this guy. But I'm going to still, for consistency, I'm going to still stick with my uh, whoever's doing it. Okay, that's going to be that. So we have nine damage on him because he did actually attack me at range one. I blocked it. I used my move two. Kratos' rage is down to zero. And then we have to decide what we want to do here. I think I'm going to go ahead and just... What's my blue? Deal one damage enemy in his zone, one damage enemy in his zone. Uh, I don't think that's good enough. I think I'm just going to use these two together. Okay, so I'm going to take a wound and pop that down over here and deal four damage to him while also gaining three Spartan Rage. One, two, three. So we're going to go up one, two, three. Um, and I couldn't have gotten the Spartan Rage from this because that was before I was at full when that happened. So I took a wound and I'm dealing four damage to the boss. So we're going to basically uh, remove a token and give him a fiver. Okay, so we're going to give him a 5 over here. 
So we're at 10 over there. So we're at 13 so far, we're doing fine. Then I will go ahead and activate this over here to be able to do a basically a ranged attack and heal one. So I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna heal one and I'm gonna do a basic ranged attack, just doing one damage to him, nothing special, nothing more. And that's basically, uh, that's my turn. Okay, and now we go to the uh, baddie's turn. So baddie's turn, they're still drawing two cards, but we have to do a thing. We have to go ahead and take out one of the nightmare cards, we'll put off to the side, one hellwalker card, and we're gonna take the two boss cards and put them into the deck, and then we shuffle the decks again. Whoops. So I'm gonna put this here, put that there, I'll have to shuffle this again, shuffle this again, and then we're gonna go ahead and do the following. Starting next round, we're gonna be drawing three cards. This round we still draw two, next round we draw three. So we're gonna go ahead and do one, and that we have advanced the tracker, and we're going to activate monster A. Okay, so monster A is the, um, the Hellwalker, he's going to walk one, and he's not within range. We're gonna do it again, and we do this one over here, and the boss activates. He's activating Fire Pillar. Uh, we're going to activate and add a Fire Token to the zone it ends. Now, again, remember, they like to lose distance from you. So I could choose how to move him because there's no real... He just wants to move away from me. So I'm going to move one over here. And I'm going to have him put a Fire Token in his zone. I'm going to put a Fire Token in the zone he ends in. And then he's going to... Um, oh, interesting. Because maybe I want to move him over here so I take less damage. You know what? We'll have him do that. We're going to have him move this way. That way he takes less damage. I'm going to put the fire token on his head, because why not? Uh, I'm over here, and then he's going to activate. I should have kept some cards for attack, for defense. I should have kept a card for defense. Uh, and then he's going to hit me for two, basically. That's going to be his card. And as a fire token, he hits me for two. I will take two damage. These cards can all go away, by the way. And I will take two damage. Okay. And that was our turn. It means back to our turn again. That was two act actions from them, two cards. We're going to draw seven cards and continue to hit. So we do have our five over here, our powerful five, which is great. We also have our plus against the boss, which is great too. And then we have this one over here, which we'll immediately discard to gain two Spartan Rage. And then also heal two. Okay. So we're doing fine overall as far as... Well, I'm doing fine, honestly. I mean, not to get into it, but the last time I played the solo, I did not do as fine. So we have that... And now we need to figure out what we want to do. Um, he's not in our zone. He's adjacent to our zone. No, this wouldn't have been one away. This wouldn't have been one away. I couldn't do that. That's not legal. I don't think diagonals count. We're going to have him move one away like a proper legal game. Okay. So I don't love that because, well, frankly, that is not helpful. This block two, I'm going to hold on to because that just makes sense, honestly. Um, I don't know if I'm going to bother moving into a zone because the, the, the hell walk is not scary enough right now. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do an axe toss where I'm going to do one, two, and it's plus three against the boss. So it's one plus four, basically, which is five plus another five, although we're going to move this from the game. So we have a total of 10 damage, 10 damage against the boss right now. So we're just going to stack a nice fast fat 10 on his health over here. So he's at 24 damage out of his 35. So honestly... I'm doing much better than I was last time. Uh, then we're going to keep this in for defensive measures. And I guess we could go ahead and use these to go ahead and step into a zone. Let's do that. Let's do it because why not? Uh, it's going to take two damage for us, but I think we can afford to. So I'm going to go ahead and pop one and two. And we're going to step into a zone uh, and attack him that way. And we're going to deal one, two, three, four because we're moving into the zone. And five from this, which we didn't use yet. That's gonna be five more damage against him, which means he's nearly dead. Um, this is this is going well, going well. So we got 25, 29 damage out of 35. 29 damage out of 35. We're doing fine. I'm not worried at all. This is going. It turns out if you play this game enough, you get better at it. Because like I said, this is my third playthrough. So uh, that's basically that. I'm gonna keep this card in my hand, and we're going to go ahead and activate three cards against us. So first things first is going to advance one. Then we go ahead and do one. We have Nightmares activating. There are no Nightmares, so we're going to spawn this time round. We're actually going to spawn two Nightmares, like I said. They're going to go over here, and they are not. They're going to mo move towards me. So they spawn and move, and they're not within one, because, again, I'm not counting diagonally here. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and activate the next card, which is going to be Hellwalkers are going to activate. He's going to spawn and then activate. So we're going to pop this guy over here. Um, he's going to spawn, and then they're going to march towards me. Now, this is where... I don't know the next card, but I assume it's more likely to be the boss. So I'm going to actually hold off on this one. So this guy's going to walk into this crowded zone, which is a little unclear where he is. He's in the zone with us. Oh, that was not good. That was not good. TTS. It's enjoyable. We have to let it fall. There we go. There we go. Okay. 
Oh, no, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. There we go. We're all kind of in that zone there. Uh, now, he's going to attack me, and I think I'm just going to take the damage. Because I'm only concerned with killing the boss right now. So I'm going to take the damage. I'm not going to worry about that card. I'm going to hope we have a boss card drawn. We do. Perfect. Okay, our third card is a boss card. He's going to smash. Move two zones towards Atreus, which in this case is me. Add one fire token and deal two damage to all heroes in that zone. And again, the all heroes is unclear. So he's already in our zone. He's going to add a fire token, making this even more dangerous to walk into, if I can get those there. And then he's going to deal uh, two damage to all heroes in the zone. But I'm going to block two with this card, which is going to move up my Spartan Rage and also deal three damage to him because of that. So we're going to go ahead and drop. Let's remove two of these ones over here and give him another five, which I believe puts him within, um, that's 32. He needs three more health to die. I think we got this. I think we powered up appropriately. We're going to go ahead and draw a card over here. We're going to shuffle. We're going to flip this over here. We're going to shuffle over here. We're going to draw six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. Those of you who pointed out that these cards were not shuffled in, I don't disagree with you. Uh, I'm not going to bother redoing it for the record. If I was really trying to be like really accurate, I would. But I think we both agree that I can do three damage to him basically no matter what. Uh, so, I mean, even with this card alone, no, I can't do it with this card alone. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and uh, drop one, two, three, four, five damage on the boss right now which is going to kill the boss, which is going to take him out, and he's dead. And that's the game. That's basically the game. That is basically how you play through uh, God of War uh, from Simon Games. Uh, it's going to be, a, like I said, a one to two player dungeon crawler. You're basically trying to take down a boss. Uh, you're trying to have the... If you've, play, if you've played Cthulhu Death May Die and you see vibes of that here, that's definitely present. I believe one of the designers of the game is also someone who worked on Cthulhu Death May Die, or at least seasons three and four, so I believe there is overlap. Uh, but it does have some of those vibes. There's a lot of things, you know, well, I'll show you the two player stuff in a second as far as how things are different. There's a lot of things that are interesting about this one overall. I think if you, well, I don't want to dive, I don't want to do a review. I don't want to do a review now. I'll do, I'll do kind of rough thoughts. Uh, rough thoughts in the game. Don't call it a review. Is So far, it definitely has vibes of Cthulhu May Die, if you like that, plus a, uh, obviously, a God of War IP on top of it. Uh, I think that, like, my biggest concern is I want more, I want to see character variety or scenario variety, all the things I'm not seeing. Like, this scenario, again, I've played this three times in the past uh, 24 hours. So, and I'm not, I, I'm having fun with it. So, like, it's certainly not a bad game, at least not for me, but obviously I am someone who likes these types of games, so take that into account as well. But overall, and also we never got to see a few things. So that's a few things we haven't seen. Let's 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 show you all the things we haven't seen. Well, you just finished my review stuff for first, I guess. Not really review, just thoughts. Um, I like a lot of what it's doing. I do want to see the scenario variety, and I'm, I wish there was... I want. I don't know the exact details of how the character variety will play out uh, over time. Uh, the skill tree is going to be enough to keep them interesting. Are the upgrade cards enough to keep them interesting? Or do I wish there were 17 characters? Because as a huge fan of Cthulhu Death May Die, it's my number two game of all time. That's a game where I love it, but I love diving into all the various characters in that game too. And that's something I might miss here. But it feels similar to the way recently I covered the Dead Keep, uh, which is very much built on the Zombicide system, but also very different. I think this has similarities to God of War, while also well, to uh, Cthulhu Death May Die, while also being very different. Uh, whether there's room for both in your collection is likely coming down to price point. But past that, uh, now we got general thoughts and whatnot. Uh, to go over a few things we didn't see, we did not see us crossing this line, okay? And because we didn't see this cross line, uh, we didn't get to activate any of this enraged abilities. Whenever you do any of, the, any of those wounds, you also place fire token on the closest hero zone. That hero takes one fire damage for each fire token. So if you let time go by, you will start dealing with a harder boss as well. Plus he gets an extra activation there as well. So that's one thing we didn't see. Uh, you also didn't see me activating any of these little things. Uh, Atreus can spend one activation to activate this, dealing one damage to each adjacent person. Uh, it can be useful. I have found personally that in a two-player game where you're operating differently and you're moving around differently it's more relevant in the solo game where you're operating as a bundle i have found that that's not as useful uh you're not it's not as interesting to be able to use yeah I, not i i would say that in both solo games i've played i activated one of these things versus in the two-player game i played it was being activated multiple times so I, I think this is interesting, but I think you lose a little bit of it in the uh, solo game. Past that, other things we didn't see is we have over here, these are cards that are going to be giving them updated attack cards for the characters. You have the ability to find and unlock upgraded attack cards. Ground slam, you know, move one, the target enemy after the attack, and then deal plus one damage per card used. I assume it means you play, if you did, 
if you did two cards, I guess, maybe, I don't know. So there'll be other additional cards you can activate for them that you can unlock these things. I don't know exactly the rules around them. Uh, we have Piercing Hero, plus one damage, deal the damage to another enemy in an adjacent zone. So again, we have the other abilities over here that you can utilize. Uh, once you get to the end of this track over here, you just keep uh, activating your uh, Spartan Rage, and then past that, if you had, a, a, in a solo game, when Atreus gets upgraded, you instead put a little marker here, which gives them a little upgrade on that. And then lastly, we have the two-player mode over here. So two-player mode, you can have your own separate boards, you have your own separate health pools, you can see over here, your own separate hands of three cards each. So even though I started with four cards, uh, in a regular game, you'd start with three cards each, but in the solo game, your cards are a drop more powerful, your starting cards. So for example, even a, you know, dash and bash over here, it doesn't give you plus one damage. So you do start with more powerful cards to balance out the solo game. I can't speak to game balance overall, obviously. Uh, they have their different abilities that they go through when they activate the full ability trees, and they operate independently. And you have the ability to discard cards. This part's interesting. You have the ability to discard cards. Like if I discard a red card, Atreus gains his own little track over here. If I discard a blue card, you get to heal too. So you have different ways to discard cards to give yourself synergy boosts, but you are operating separately while still trying to get those synergy boosts as much as possible. And that's kind of what we have over here. That is uh, everything for the God of War playthrough. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got a sense or a feel of how the game plays. Um, I, I, I will probably check with Simon if they have a um, another scenario. And if they do, I might try to do a two-player with another scenario. But I don't know if they do. So um, no, no promises. Anyways, until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I appreciate you being here. I hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, I hope you have a good one.